we are going to now look at how reactions can exchange heat with the environment. This is very common for us. This is some of our favorite reactions. We burn natural gas to heat our house. We burn candles to give us light. We burn gasoline to drive our cars. There are two types of reactions, reactions that uh, will give off heat and reactions that absorb heat. Reactions that give off heat, reactants contain more energy than the products. So as we convert to reactions from, from reactions to products, we have to give off heat. Uh, so the products have less energy, the reactants have more. Uh, this will make the system hot. So our, a candle gets hot, candle flame gets hot. Then after it gets out, then it can release the heat to the surroundings. This is called an exothermic reaction. And the delta H is the difference between the energy content before and after. Delta we do is final minus initial. So in this case, it's products minus reactants. Now end up giving us a negative value. So negative delta H is going to be an exothermic reaction. When it makes a system hot, then it's an exothermic reaction. An endothermic reaction, the products hold more energy than the reactants. It does this by just stealing energy from the translational motion of the molecule. So the system gets colder. And then once it's colder, it can absorb heat from the surroundings. So it gets cold first, and then it can absorb heat from the surroundings. So that's an endothermic reaction. Products minus reactants will give us some positive delta H, positive amplitude. So Delta H is our version of heat from reaction. So the internal energy of a system can change. The internal energy we represent as a delta E change through either change of heat or work. So heat is the exchange of vibrations and speed of molecules between the system and the surroundings. So think of your window of the house. It's warm on the inside, cool on the outside. The warm air on the inside hits the glass, gives some heat to the glass, and it bounces off slower, bounces off colder. The outside air hits the glass, bounces off faster, takes heat from the glass. But there's no exchange of matter in that process. So that's heat. And this delta H over here is a specific form of heat. It's the heat that's exchanged between system and surroundings um, at constant pressure. And since we live in a constant pressure bath of the atmosphere, every time we measure heat, it's generally going to be our delta H version under constant pressure. So work is different. Work involves a net movement of matter. So we're pushing against something. It's a gas pushing against something. So our steam engine, we boil water and the steam push against the pistons to drive the engine, drive the, the trains, or push against the turbine to create electricity. We break our system out from everything. So a system is what we're working on. It could be a beaker, it could be a candle, it could be a flow through a reactor. Uh, and then the surroundings are everything else. So the signs of energy flow is when it leaves, when it's going from system to surrounding, it's going to be negative. When it enters the system, comes surroundings to system, it's going to be positive. So it's some of the words that we use for this. Um, we release heat. We do work. Uh, we have an expanding gas. They're all for exothermal processes or negative processes, negative for work or heat. The positives will be absorbing heat. Work is done on it, uh, consuming gas, surroundings doing work on the system. So that will be positive values. So we have problems of this sort where we have to interpret the language as to being positive or negative. So this is an example of it. So gas releases 45 
kilojoules of heat. So releasing, releasing is going to be a negative for us. 25 kilojoules of work done on it, done on it, is going to be a positive. So we put in our negative 45 for our Q, a positive 29 for our W. We add them together and we end up with negative 16 change of internal energy uh, for that gas. So when we work under a constant pressure system, we're able to make a simple equation for work. Work is what's called a path function. It depends on how we do it as to how much work is done. Typically, we would have to uh, measure everything along the way and do an integration to get it. But luckily, under certain constraints, we get simple equations. So the constraint that uh, we find easy to use is a constant external pressure. So we live in a constant pressure bath, the atmosphere. So air that pushes against is, is pushing against a constant external pressure. So in that case, our work is a negative P delta V. And that's the external pressure that we're pushing against. So that's gonna be a constant. This equation only works for expanding gases, but if we compress a gas, we're compressing against the internal pressure, and that is changing. So that will not work. Uh, for this equation, it's easy to use atmospheres in liters. So we got our work in units of liter atmospheres. And often we like to see joules, so our conversion between them is one liter atmosphere is under 1.3 joules. And before we do a calculation on that, let's do a, some qualitative stuff. So if we look at a reaction, is it doing work on the surroundings or the surroundings doing work on the reaction? Well, this is based on how many moles of gas that we have. So we're increasing moles of gas, we have more moles of product gas than we do of reactant gas, then that gas is pushing the surroundings away. So the system is doing work on the surroundings. But if the reactants have more moles of gas than the product, we have consumed gas and the surroundings are pushing in. So the surroundings are doing work on the system. And if there's no change in the number of moles of gas between reactants and products, then no work is done. So some two reactions here. So I am sublimating from solid into a gas. By doing that, this former gas is going to push the surrounding air away. So the system is doing work on the surroundings. Here we're dissolving gas into water to form carbonic acid. So we're decreasing the amount of gas. So the surroundings are pushing on that gas. So the, the surroundings are doing work on the system. Then let's do a calculation on this expanding gas work. So if we're expanding gas from 2.5 to 4.2 liters against a constant pressure of 7.2 atmospheres, well, our work is negative P delta V. So we put in our 7.2 atmospheres. Delta V is final minus initial, so 4.2 minus 2.5 liters, it gives us 1.7 liters times the 7.2 atmospheres, gives us a negative 12.2 uh, liter atmospheres. If we don't specify units, that is a valid answer. If we ask for joules, then when we take that, multiply by the ratio of 101.3 joules over one liter atmosphere, and our other valid answer is negative 1240 joules.